Um, I want to, uh, in, in discussing the, the bill that uh, I have before the committee, I want to first uh, thank my colleagues on both sides of the aisle for their support, Representatives Curtis Kinzinger, Salazar, Fitzpatrick, uh, and Joe Wilson. Uh, you led this bill with me when Putin's invasion kicked off, and despite what the news often says, behind the curtains I've seen, we've all seen tremendous bipartisan unity over the last six months to ensure that Ukraine's brave fighters um, have all of the military hardware that they need and the support that they need more broadly from the United States. Um, we have this bipartisan unity because of scenes like this. This is a familiar image, I hope, to all of us now, a scene following the massacre in the Ukrainian village of Bucha. And of course, we know it's only one of many atrocities committed by the Russian military against the Ukrainian people. Um, I have in my hand here uh, a piece of shrapnel from um, the fighting in Kharkiv, um, which to me is it's something very striking because it gives tangible meaning to um, the death, the violence that has been unleashed on innocent people in Ukraine by the Putin regime, and I'll just pass it around. But the point I want to make today uh, is that this would not be possible without this. This is a picture of um, a friend of many people on this committee, a, a Russian dissident named Vladimir Karamurza. Uh, I believe he's testified before this committee. Um, he's one of the bravest people I've ever met. Putin tried to poison him twice, and he survived. On his most recent trip to Russia, he was arrested and is now in pretrial detention. And the point here is that it is Putin's fear of brave Russians like this Russians who have fought for democracy and human rights within their own country that leads to his fear of the people of Ukraine who have modeled democracy and respect for human rights in their own country. The war in Ukraine begins with repression inside Russia, and hence the bill that we are considering today. We have before us a list of nearly 200 key cronies of Putin, individuals who've been identified by these brave Russian democracy activists, including Vladimir, including Alexei Navalny, as, linchpin, as the linchpins of, of this regime, as the reasons why Putin is able to stay in power and fuel the war in Ukraine, while um, enabling him to steal money from the Russian people to empower his regime. Um, that's why we continue to call for sanctions against enablers of the Putin regime. That's why we are separately moving legislation through the NDAA to make the United States, um, uh, to, to secure our financial system in the United States against the proceeds of that corruption. Um, and that's why um, I hope everyone will join me today in supporting this legislation that will, um, under the Magnitsky Act, um, uh, initiate the process of sanctioning this group of individuals who have been identified by Russian democracy activists as linchpins of the Putin regime. Um, I'll end by quoting something that Vladimir um, once said. He said that the Magnitsky Act is the most pro-Russian law ever to have been passed by a foreign parliament. Um, Pro-Russian um, because it stands with those Russians who honestly speak the truth about the nature of the regime and who have the courage to try to change their country for the better. We stand with them just as much as we stand with the people of Ukraine today. Thank you, and I yield back.